Well, hello. How are you guys doing? Welcome to TEDx Dupree Park TV. I'm Gina Carr. I'm your host, and I'm the COO of TEDx Dupree Park. I'm delighted that you could join us today. We have a fantastic show for you. We have some brilliant people coming in from all different parts of the planet that will be talking with us today and sharing their ideas about seeding greatness and sharing what they're doing in the world to make the world a better place. I'm joined by my co-host today, Mike Cena, who is the co-organizer of TEDx Dupree Park. And let's bring Mike on and hear a little bit from him as far as how is life in Georgia and how is life on the TEDx Dupree Park front, Mike? Well, I got to tell you, life is great here, particularly in North Georgia. I've mentioned before, I think there's uh, very few places better than this during the fall. We've got a cool day today. And I mentioned during our our get ready session that uh, there may be time for a fire in the fireplace this evening, the first one of the season. Uh, overall, things are going great in Woodstock. The economy is doing pretty well. There are jobs coming back. Restaurants are opening. In the city of Canton, just north of Woodstock, there is a new development called the Mill on Etowa, which is just a fabulous development that's bringing in lots of uh, venues, outdoor and indoor venues, restaurants, bars, retail. There is a new co-working space called Thrive that is doing very well. It's a, forgive me, a lovely facility, very welcoming and warm, a great place uh, to conduct business and meet people. So. There's a lot of good stuff going on here about where you are in Orlando. Well, it's quite nice. It's as usual, a chamber of commerce kind of day, lots of white fluffy clouds, blue skies, the weather's pretty warm and fireplaces. Uh, I, I used to know what a fireplace was back when I lived in Atlanta, but I haven't, haven't used one of those in a while. So, you know, I thought this might be a good time for us to pop over to the TEDx Dupree Park website. Mm -hmm. and show folks around a little bit over there, including mm -hmm. the big announcement that our tickets are now on sale for yep. our event. It's going to be virtual from 2 to 6 p.m. Eastern on Saturday and Sunday, December 5th and 6th. And we are getting the speakers all ready for that. Mm -hmm. So let me just do a quick screen share here and show you guys a, a few things. Let's see. This is what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's very exciting to finally get this thing going. and. Uh, even though it is online, it is we're still going to blow the doors off of Woodstock, Cherokee County, Georgia, and uh, the United States. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. And in particular, we we are funded by sponsors. We are a nonprofit. Our presenting sponsor is the nonprofit Green Pets America. And most of you who watch the show regularly know our organizer, Steve Monahan. He is the founder of Green Pets America, and he's uh, taking a little bit of time off today for some much needed R&R &R as we gear up for our TEDx. And so we did want to recognize him as our presenting sponsor, but we, we have quite a few sponsors there, including my organization, Video Rockstars, where we help people get more confident presenting on camera and learn how to turn their intellectual property into online courses and membership programs. Uh, we have a number of different organizations. We, we can't talk about all of them today, but is there another one that you wanted to pick out and just say a few, couple words about, Mike? They're all great sponsors. One of the ones I'd like to recognize, one of our very early sponsors is Sixes Pit. And they are a bicycle uh, retail shop, repair shop. Angel Rivera is the guy that owns it. Their business is doing phenomenally well, considering that bicycling is one of the, the few outdoor activities you can do that still maintain social distancing. And he was, I think, our second or third sponsor to sign on with TEDx Dupree Park, and we very much appreciate his support and the activities that he is uh, helping folks in and around the Woodstock area. Mm, yeah, so we had him on just a few weeks ago, and he was mm -hmm. quite a good guest for us as well, and yeah. uh, loved that. Now, here, this is back when we, hit, when we were able to do in-person <laughs> events. We had a big launch party mm -hmm. at Mad Life, and, mm -hmm. and Mike, that's you and me there on the stage, yeah. and I don't know what we're talking about, but uh, I guess we're talking about how wonderful the event's going to be. We had no clue that we were about to go into this lockdown. But I did want to just show you guys this. this on, our tickets are on in Eventbrite, and you just click right over here to get tickets. They are limited in number. It's going to be a totally virtual event. Uh, right now, we have early bird prices. So for only $17, you can get general admission. Mm -hmm. And for VIP, VIP is where you're going to be able to get to go into 
VIP rooms with the speakers mm -hmm. and ask them questions, small group rooms where you can really get to know them a lot better and they get to know you. And so those are only $77 right now. So we invite you guys to pop over there and you can get there by going to the TEDxDupreePark.com website and right at the top, there's buttons for speakers and tickets right there. So you can get those. So with that, um, Mike, you know, we don't get to hear a lot about your business these days because you're usually on here interviewing people and mm -hmm. just, let me give you the floor for just a few minutes here and tell us a little bit about what it is that you do to help people. Well, I appreciate that, Gina. And uh, I'm what's known as a fee-only certified financial planner. That tends to fly over most people's heads. But basically what it means is I do not sell insurance and I don't sell securities. But I do help people make the most of what they have, live more in the present, and feel comfortable about an unknown future. And I will tell you, my business has done pretty well over the year of COVID. I'm having more conversations and I'm helping more people. And uh, I just, I love the work. It's um, it's quite rewarding and it's uh, uh, made a difference in my life. And I like to think I'm making a difference in other people's lives as well by, uh, one of the things I've learned is many of us carry with us this burden of, of shame of past poor financial decisions. And that's something that we all as human beings uh, have in our lives. I wrote a book uh, four or five years ago, Raise Your Hand If You've Ever Done Anything Stupid With Money. I'd like to redo it and cross out stupid and write above it human because we are all just human. Uh, money is a necessary ingredient, a tool for living and life. And uh, like I said, my focus is helping people make the most of what they have regardless of their particular circumstances or situation and try to live more in the present, not fret over what's happened in the past and not angst too much over what may or may not happen in a vastly unknown future. I love that. And I love that. Uh, yeah, we're all human. I, I guess that's yeah. something that certainly I've gotten more in touch with as I've matured, as I've gotten older. <laughs> and that, that humanness thing just keeps keeps coming up you know i yeah. i keep making mistakes how is that possible why wouldn't i have learned by now not to make mistakes again <laughs> I, I tell you it would be a really boring world if we were not making mistakes and uh, mistakes are the fruit of innovation and learning and growing and um one of the things that i've talked about you know covid it's been dire for many of us but i think adversity tends to yield uh, adaptability and innovation. And out of every great uh, dire circumstances, the human race comes out stronger, more adaptable and better. And I, I see good times ahead. Uh, I know a lot of people looking really forward to 2021. What is uh, the tweet and the thing I've, I've heard is uh, my mother's uh, threat to slap me into next year. Is that still available? <laughs> That's a good one. I have not heard that. I love that. That's perfect. Oh my gosh. Well, uh, speaking of weather and all that, our speakers, Lynn Sherwood Humphreys is one of our speakers and she is going to be on our virtual stage. And mm -hmm. so she's saying they've gotten their second snow out there already in Jackson Hole. My goodness. That's, wow. uh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. All righty. Well, let's go ahead and bring on our first guest for today. And this is a, uh, personal friend of mine. I She's such a brilliant woman and I met her bopping mm -hmm. all around the world. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. she is recognized as a world leading authority on well-being and stress at work, right? We need people who can talk about stress today, that's for sure. She's the media's first choice for commenting on workplace stress issues. She's the best-selling author of Tole's Managing Stress in the Workplace and Show Stress Who's Boss. Her focus is on developing a healthy workplace culture through the successful management of stress and organizational change. She's a sought after international keynote speaker working with equal success in the UK, Europe and the Gulf region. And she's also the chair of the International Stress Management Association, UK, which is a charity and professional association. And she's founder of National Stress Awareness Day. Carol is a fellow and past president of the Professional Speaking Association. 
So with that, let's bring Carol on board all the way across the pond. How's <laughs> life for you, Miss Carol Spears? Is that what I say? It's absolutely fine. It is absolutely fine. We don't have the, the weather that you've got. We have the usual coming into the winter and coming into what we think is the second wave of COVID. So therefore, we're fine. We're just about getting used to it, I guess. I'm going to have to get used to it yet again. Oh, my goodness. Well, you know, you have such a focus on stress. And mm -hmm. I'm certainly that is a big part of Seeding Greatness, which is our theme for the 2020 TEDx. And tell us a little bit about how it is that you became called into this area and, and you got into this area and made this your life's work. I'd love to know. Well, certainly, Gina, it is my life's work. And I set up a stress consultancy in 1987, so many, many years ago. <clears throat> but my background is in psychology and I'm a trained counsellor. And it has always been my mission in life to help people who can't help themselves regarding stress, how they can reduce stress, how they can build resilience, and how they can improve their health and well-being. And uh, as a public speaker, I take it as my role to help those who can't stand up and speak for themselves. And with COVID at the moment, certainly we're experiencing very high levels of stress, increased anxiety. People are working and living with uncertainty, possible redundancies. It's a big challenge for so many people. And quite honestly, they need as much support as we can give them. So part of my role as chair of the International Stress Management Association is to provide for them some of that support, the guidance and the insight that they will need. Well, I got to tell you, your timing is, is perfect and you're right. There is increasing levels of stress throughout the world mm -hmm. and a lot of it due to COVID. I'm kind of curious, how do people find you and... Uh, I guess if you could give us a couple of examples of how you've been able to help. I think that in my in my role as a therapist, you see it individually. Uh, you mm -hmm. see people who are going through relationship problems and all my work now is obviously done online. Um, but also the other thing that I actually started this year was normally on Stress Awareness Day, we would have our annual conference. So this year, because of all the obvious reasons, we couldn't have our annual conference at the end of Stress Awareness Week. So I decided in April, we're going to have a summit. Well, I thought instead of just making it a summit for a day, why not make the summit for a whole week? Which is exactly what we have. So Monday to Friday, 2nd of November to the 6th, is a place where people can come and learn and basically experience the insight, exactly as you said, Mike, that people do need. So this has been our purpose and our mission, and it's been a long haul, and we're nearly there now, but certainly it's a very important event to do exactly what you've said, provide that help, support, mm -hmm. and guidance. Well, kudos to you. One of the things that I have learned over my life, uh, one of the best stress relievers or um, antidotes to stress is getting a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't know. How does that fit in with your particular philosophy? It fits in exactly 100%. And it's amazing, Mike, how many people take their phones to bed with them, waiting for that call at three o'clock in the morning because it may just happen. And I say to the first thing you need to do is leave your cell phone outside your bedroom door. And then clients say things to me like, however, I have my alarm on the phone. I'll say this, you can go and get yourself an alarm clock, which stops them straight away. So you're right. Having a, a good night's sleep, everybody needs that. I mean, of course, everybody yeah. has different amounts of sleep that they need. Mm -hmm. I need my seven hours. If I don't get my seven hours, I'm not a very happy girl. But a night, good night's sleep, 100%. Well, I'm with you there on the seven, eight hours of sleep, and everybody is a little bit different, but I have found it's remarkable how much better my day goes, my week goes, if I'm sleeping well at night. And a lot of that has to do, even in the age of COVID, is just walking. If you can walk around your house, I have some uh, free weights that I will carry around with me, and I'll, I'll do a little circle throughout my house to try and keep going when the weather is inclement, or for whatever reason, I can't get out. I'm I'm very lucky that I live in a fairly rural area and it's quite easy to walk and hike and exercise and still maintain social distance. I know this makes a huge difference for people in urban areas such as London or New York or Chicago. 
any specific uh, techniques or ideas for people that uh, may not have the luxury that I have? I think what's very important, you're exactly right. Not everybody does have that luxury. So therefore, wherever you are, if you're in your one bedroom apartment, it is certainly up to you to try and manage the best way you possibly can. You know, something might with people working from home at the moment, not everybody has exactly the right working environment that actually helps them. And not everybody does. You know, you may be in a one bedroom apartment. You may have kids that you're, you know, you, that are you're managing homeschooling or whatever whatever that may well be. So therefore, it's a matter of trying your very best to actually manage your day. If you need, if you're the kind of person who needs to have com com you know, communication with other people, then make sure you do that by the telephone. Call people, on a, you know, so people know you need to have a coffee break with somebody, call somebody. So therefore, the first thing, Mike, is to know who you are, know what is that you need. And if that is the case, then make sure you do something about it. And if communication is that really, really important um, aspect in your life, then make sure you build that into your everyday. Yeah, well said. One of the other things that I have used in my life in my role as a financial advisor, financial planner, I need to be informed and sometimes I just can't take the deluge of negative news. I have mm -hmm. found more and more uh, using my XM radio and switching to the comedy channel or doing some stand up comedy YouTube stuff. I find left, uh, laughter is one of the best medicines anyone can take. Do you have a habit of trying to incorporate that into some of your therapies? Absolutely. Laughter really is some of the best medicine. And with the news, as you exactly as you said, Mike, with the news as it is at the moment, it really is. It's really very difficult to hear. It's very difficult to manage. We're listening to things that are actually outside of our control. And what I would say to people is there's no point in worrying about what's outside of your control. Just concern yourself over what is inside of your control. And that does make sense, but sometimes people get those boundaries sort of rather hazy and don't necessarily see it and don't necessarily see that they can do anything about it. And if the news is concerning you, don't listen to it or listen yeah. or restrict it, maybe listen to it once a day. But some people who are news junkies, and then I start <laughs> then start saying to me, I'm a news junkie. And I think to myself, well, that means you're listening to negativity most of the day at the moment. So be very, very careful. Yeah, I think it's really important. And I find so many people, it's easier to worry and think about things they can't control rather than focus on what they can, because that involves some actual work, some actual thinking, some actual actions that make their own lives individually better. Absolutely. Totally, totally agree with that. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in on this, too, because I very intentionally, especially around the big election times, go into total um, information diet, not information yeah. overload, information diet. I just turn off the news. I turn off. So the important things still trickle up to me. Uh, but but for the most part, I, I just don't get deluged by all this negativity that's going on and mm -hmm. try to steer clear. I, I have this invisible shield, shields up. That's one of my new mantras is shields up against the negativity and, and all of that that's going on. But I bet that, is that going to be a big topic of your conferences coming up, Carol? Yes, it is. The conference is really about health and well-being, how to manage it how to manage your stress levels. It's not all about COVID. It's certainly all about, it's about technology. It's about what's happening tomorrow. We've got futurists who are speaking at our summit. It's really an event that looks at mental health, how to improve mental health for yourself as an individual, but also for the organization. And what we're delighted to do as well, we're delighted to have actually also done, we've actually running some free sessions right throughout the week as well. So people can join us. There's a laughter session. Mike will be pleased to know. We have a laughter session. We have a singing session. I'm going to be there for the singing session, certainly. And we have a yoga session and mindfulness um, and a sleep session. So again, Mike's picked up on two aspects there that we're going to be covering. So it runs from the Monday to the Friday, 2nd to the 6th of November. I have to say, I'm really proud of it. I want it to be a success because I want to be able to get out to the community around the world 
not just the UK, but around the world. And we have worldwide speakers. And you're one of our speakers, Gina, which I would absolutely delighted, delighted to know uh, and look forward to your presentation. So I just I'm so, so pleased that we're actually having this conversation today so we can actually promote this summit. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And, and I thought this might be a good opportunity to um, to share this isma.org.uk and um, so that's part of the beauty of it I mean in the past people would have had to have gone over to the UK right mm -hmm. but right now people can participate from all over the world literally and I I bet that you may have just a lot of people who pop in from from the US from uh, you did I originally meet you in Australia Yes, absolutely. We have we have branches in Australia, Nigeria, Italy, uh, around the world. Uh, yeah, India. So we really are an international organization. It was started over 35 years ago, not by me, but it was started 35 years ago. And really, it is that international organization. And to have this international summit where we can bring in people from around the world. So you'll be there. Other people will be there. And it is absolutely, it's just, I'm really proud, a very, very proud chair of this association. Mm, well, that's that's great. And I do see the flag, right? The, the flags, multiple flags right there of people from around the world that are part of your organization. So really so exciting and just such a great benefit that you're bringing to the world. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you. And uh, the organization looks wonderful. So people can attend the conference. They can join the organization. And so somebody out there who's watching right now, they're saying, well, I'm stressed but I'm not in that field. How would you address that as far as what's there for them? We, there will be many activities for individuals. There are, there are over 50 speakers. Out of 50 speakers over five days, there's a huge amount of wealth, knowledge, expertise, and insight. And the beauty of those five days is, and I know that people can't be chained to their computers. We have decided that all the pre-records and all the live recordings will all be available to people right throughout November. So if somebody says to me, I'm very busy between the 2nd and the 6th, I'll say, I'm delighted you're busy, but you can still listen to the recordings right until the 30th of November. So really, there is something for everybody in that particular summit. We particularly brought in experts from around the world with different topics, different insights, and different expertise. There'll be something there for everyone. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Carol. With that, let me let you go. But as you're leaving, is there anything that you want to share with anyone where they can find you or any, any additional information that we did not go over yet? Yes, yeah, sure. Well, obviously, well, go to the website, which is www.isma.org.uk. Have a look around. You've got my email address there. Get in touch with me if you've got any questions. Talk to me. It's all about communications, communications, communications. And that's what we as the association, we pride ourselves on that. So please just hook up, say hi, and uh, let, let's just start that conversation. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Carol. I appreciate you so much. And thank you for uh, bringing me into Is ISMA to mm -hmm. the organization and to your conference as well. So thank you and have a great evening there in the UK. Take care. Okay, well, my goodness, it's a wonderful thing about going virtual and having our TEDx Dupree Park TV is that we can talk to people all over the world. And so it's great to have been able to bring her in. Our next guest is a little bit closer to me. She's from uh, she's from nearby. I'm based in Orlando. She's based in the Sarasota area. Let me just tell you a little bit about our next guest, Jessica Peterson. She's a best-selling author. She's a certified business and life coach. She's published seven books and she's a TEDx speaker already. Um, after a 20-year career in banking, mortgage, and financial world, she stepped into her dream and created a company to provide a positive impact for people. She's a licensed real estate agent and the founder of the Simply Wow Agency. She's creating a community of wow power players who are all on a mission to wow people, maximize income, and create a wow life for themselves. So, Jessica, welcome aboard to TEDx Dupree Park TV. We're so glad that you could join us today. How's life for you? It's amazing, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. And you're, you're such a blessing to so many. I want to say thank you. 
Well, thank you so much. And I'm so glad that our paths crossed years ago through social media. And I saw some things you were doing and you saw some things I was doing. And we're like, hmm, I think we're kind of kindred spirits here wanting to bring the best out in people. And we're doing it in different ways. Why don't you take a few minutes to tell folks a little bit more about the WOW Agency and what you are doing to seed greatness in the world today, Jessica? Uh, well, thank you so much. So Simply Wow Agency, I say it's simple. You wow people, your business, and you. What I really discovered is the root of happiness and this enriched luxury life, wealthy lifestyle came down to relationships. So that really is the foundation of Simply Wow Agency. How can you enrich the relationships with your customers, your community, and your friends? And then from there, it ultimately does boost and support your business. And I like to take it a step further and work with companies on how to you know, work less and still increase their income. It's, it's an ultimate goal of ours. And I want to share a little secret insider info today that a lot of people really like when it comes to seeding that greatness and really looking at our time and value, valuing it. It all started um, after my husband was in ICU. And I really realized that so many people are, are wasting time in life and not going after their dreams and their goals and their passions and their purpose out there. So I really felt this desire and need to write a book called Create the Perfect Day, which is now called Create a Wow Life, the updated version. And part of that, when I talk about time for businesses, I like to share if you were to take one hour a day and to save time within your life or your business. And we times that by 365 days out of the year. That's 365 hours. Divide it by the traditional 40-hour work week. That's nine weeks of time. So really saving that hour a day, you can be gifting yourself nine weeks of time. Some common ways I've been able to do that is I've taught social media agencies, universities, and companies social media. And a lot of times they don't have a plan. It's like that hamster on a wheel, coffee in hand, hair on fire, chasing the next deal moment. So I love to work with businesses who are all about wowing people, how to go ahead and create that plan and to save that time and social media. That could be the hour a day, or it could be in other avenues and areas of business. So that's one insider information on the business. And then the part that people absolutely love, right before COVID, I was traveling around the world and teaching was how to wow you. So since COVID, I've noticed a lot of people have really gone in this overwhelm mode. People keep saying, we don't know what day it is, what hour it is. We really don't know what's happening in life. And so my book, a lot of people have said that they've pulled back out. I've even pulled it back out. And it's one that I continuously go to because create the perfect day or a wild life is always evolving and changing. And there's some fundamental fundamental principles I want to go ahead and teach everyone here to really reflect and think upon. So three I'm going to highlight today. Number one on creating a wild life for you is to really look at your purpose in life. And some people have said, I don't know my purpose. And that's okay because someday it will be revealed to you at the right time. Some people have said, Jessica, I knew my purpose all these years and then it changed. It's scary. It's okay. And again, if you don't know what your purpose is, always step back and look what you love to do as a kid. And if you can't really remember, start asking people that you knew or looking at pictures or the answer will start coming. So for myself, I was a tomboy. I love to play in nature in the woods. No surprise. I'm a forest bather. Time magazine wrote an amazing article on it. And also, I was very organized and into numbers. They skipped me in school several years in math. I love numbers and formulas. And then all my dolls had their lives all organized, where they worked, when they worked, when they volunteered, when they got raises. And that was so much fun to me, right? So when I used to go to my friend's house and they played dolls, they look at me as if I was crazy. It just goes to show that each of us have our own unique purposes in our life. So number one is really knowing your purpose and looking at that. And that can go ahead and indicate the rest of having a wild life for you. And again, if you don't know it, it's okay. The answer will come. The second step is all about that balance in life. And there was Dr. DeLon. He once shared with me that life is like driving a car. If you get a flat tire, you're not going to get very far. So each tire represents a part in our life, an area in our life. Does it mean we need to exchange equal, perfect amount of time in each tire in our car in our life? 
No, it just simply means we need to be filled up so we can go ahead and get to our destination. And those four key areas I do talk about more and dive more into my book, Create a Wild Life. I'm going to share with you some of it today. One of them is relationships that we spoke about earlier. In my TEDx talk, I shared how the top regrets of the ones dying was not staying in touch with people in their life. So one is definitely relationships. Look at what you want to get out of your life in relationships. The second one is wealth. So wealth can come in a variety of different areas or ways. You know, real estate, which is what I do, and I love connecting people with the right real estate agents and teams all around the world. Um, it can be your business, which I love going into companies and turning them around. I've done that over the years as well. A third area is the social impact faith part. What is it you believe in and how are you giving and paying that forward? That is so important to go ahead and look at in your life. Another part is to go ahead and look at health. As I mentioned, my husband in ICU, we always want to make sure that we're being our best self as possible because without our health, everything else can go ahead and suffer. So the third area I wanna go ahead and touch base on really quick is dreams. So many of us have dreams and I love hearing people's dreams. They were given to us for a reason. And I love to educate people a free way to have a digital dream big board. I talk more about it in my book, Create a Wild Life, and you can have it on your phone and look at it every single day. Again, we were given those dreams for a reason. And so it's just about starting to plan and take that action upon that. I'm one of the few certified get statement coaches in the world teaching the secrets to get what you want. And yes, ultimately it's for the business aspect. Although I have, I'm happy to announce it recently. I had two amazing women I trained in a group session and they said, we want to get the man of our dreams and get married. And I'm happy to announce that they both got it and they could not believe it. So it really truly works. And I can't wait to hear what every single person's purpose and um, their goals and their dreams are and to connect. And if I can connect you with right people or resources, I'm happy to do so. So I would look forward to hearing from questions. Has anyone chimed in? <laughs> I got to tell you, much of what you've talked about resonated with me so much. I got to tell you, I love the word wow. I have a little sticky note on the bottom of my computer screen, wow my clients, wow my customers. And that's my objective. I want to wow them. My whole idea is for people to walk away from a session with me thinking that was more than I expected. Mm -hmm. And I love that whole notion of wowing. And I got to tell you, I also identify with the numbers aspect. Um, I'm a numbers guy. I, I like to say I'm a left brain introvert who's learning how to be more right brain uh, connector. And I have a background in real estate. I grew up in a in a building in a real estate uh, household. I was a realtor for many, many years. In the end, not really the kind of problems I'd like to solve. Well, thank you, Mike. That's amazing. You wowed me just to hear that you have wow, and that inspires me. So thank you. I'm curious, are you from Florida, Sarasota area, or what's your background? Where where'd you grow up? I grew up out in Oregon, so in e Eugene, just outside of Eugene, Springfield. That's where I grew up. And then I moved to Colorado for almost 14 years. And then now I've been out here in beautiful, sunny Florida. My husband's a boater, so we live in a boater's community. I'll raise my hand there. My retirement is to buy a boat and cruise the intercoastal waterway, the Hudson River, or the St. Lawrence Seaway, that type of stuff. I love I love the water and I love boating. So um, maybe one of these days we'll end up meeting on the water. That would be amazing. Those are the best meetings ever, right? I mean, I love to take my yeah. real estate clients out there too. Yeah. So are you actively involved in selling, buying real estate or do you consult and connect people? It's a combination of both. So I'm really about making sure that if I'm not the right fit for someone mm -hmm. to connect with someone who is. So it's a combination of both. Well, good for you. And I, I try to do the same thing in my practice. I, It's so encompassing there's no way that any one person can know it all be an expert in every particular field and i uh, my dad was a commercial real estate broker and that was what i if i was going to do real estate it would certainly be commercial rather than residential um again kind of going back to the left brain nature of me i find residential there's a lot of emotion <laughs> when people are buying homes Yes, you're absolutely right. So I have an amazing team. There's two gentlemen I work with on the commercial end, and I have an amazing team on the residential end to make sure that everyone's taken care of. How do you go about 
writing a book. I, I bet a lot of people would like to know. I wrote a book. It was, I'll never forget. It was a big deal. I was terrified and thrilled when it was published because I, you know, it's the ultimate putting yourself out there. Mm -hmm. How do you go about writing a book? Well, I've learned so much over the years and, and the different books I've written. And I always say I'm not writing another book. I'm absolutely done. So when it comes to that, I would just say, just really think about what is your purpose with the book and what's the end result with the book and then create a table of contents or an outline and then just start letting it flow. I think sometimes we may get writer's block in the morning when I journal, that's part of my create a wildlife morning routine, just to journal and just to let it flow, the answers will come. And I always say that, you know, a lot of people expect it to be just so perfect. Stop that perfection mindset and just start letting it flow and write. And that actually held me back. I have a confession. A lot of people are shocked to hear this since I have been a speaker for so many years. I went to therapy for speaking. That was not on my dream, not my goals. And there was a powerful statement. One of my business partners, he's a former real estate agent, now a well-known um, psychotherapist. He said, Jessica, quit being selfish. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he goes, by you not getting out there, by you not sharing this information and you getting out there and sharing what you know, you're being selfish. It's not about you. It's about them. So I share that information. Hopefully it'll inspire someone to just get it out there. I mean, nothing's ever going to be perfect, but just get it out there. And it amazes me how many people write in and say that I've changed and saved their life. And that's what it's about for me at the end of the day. Excellent stuff. And I do agree. Uh, I've was somewhat raised a perfectionist and it is a blessing and a curse. I have come to learn uh, perfection is the enemy of the good. And so many times good is good enough. And I have learned we continue to refine. We continue to adapt. We continue to learn and grow and get out there and, and be your best self. So, Absolutely. Uh, love your message. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Well, we're thrilled to have you a part of TEDx uh, Dupree Park TV and look forward to helping you in any way we can going forward. And hopefully you will be sharing our message with your followers on the seeding greatness that we're trying to accomplish um, with TEDx Dupree Park. Absolutely. I'm a big fan. Cool. Certainly. Well, all of this is uh, really getting to me too, because I had a background in real estate, residential real estate yeah. and commercial real estate. And exactly for the reason, Mike, that you said you wouldn't want to be in residential real estate, I found that to be so much more rewarding mm -hmm. than commercial because commercial is just such a business transaction. And the residential is like, oh my gosh, this, this is my life. This is my nest. Mm -hmm. This is so critically important to people, uh, mm -hmm. their homes. So what you guys do, Jessica, is so, so important. What's the area geographically that you specialize in? It's Sarasota and the Keys over here. So um, yes, I just closed on Longboat Key, and there's Siesta Key, Lido Key, Sarasota, all the way up to St. Pete and down to Venice area. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Okay. So that's quite, quite a big area and beautiful area. Oh my goodness. So yes. there's some of the most gorgeous beaches in the world. Yes, I feel so blessed and I can't believe how affordable real estate is for people. People are shocked. And I, I mean, to see what you can get. So, mm -hmm. mm. well, Jessica, before we let you go, please tell us, is there, is there anything else that's on your mind today that you want to be sure to share with our audience? Here's your, here's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're so kind. I just, I just want to see every single person out there to go out there and create a wildlife for themselves because every day, as I mentioned, is a gift. It's a gift for you to go ahead and create a life that you desire and to make a difference out there. So create a wildlife on Amazon. Love for you to go ahead and check it out or connect with me. And if I can connect you with right people or resources, I'm more than happy to do so. So everyone have a wow day, okay? Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. Just great to see you. And you take care. Go enjoy the beautiful weather there in your area, in the Sarasota area. Take care. Thank you. Okay. Well, my goodness. So all the way from the... Cold and a little bit dreary, I think she might have said, UK, down to sunny Sarasota. And now we're headed back up to the Atlanta area, which is where our TEDx Dupree Park is based. It was originally going to be held 
on a physical location on stage uh, in the Madlock Stadium Studios in downtown Woodstock, which is an area where I've spent a lot of time over the last many years. And um, well, it didn't happen, but coming to us today, because of our association with different people up there is our next guest. Let me introduce you to George Klein. He's a retired Navy Chief Petty Officer who has been married 52 and a half years. His wife, Betty, and he are lifetime members of the Atlanta Blues Society, which, for which for the last eight years, he's been the president or the co-president. Uh, he and Betty are also members of the Blues Foundation in Memphis, Tennessee. And in January 2019, the Atlanta Blues Society was honored to be given the, the Keeping the Blues Alive Award. That's the highest award a Blues Society can receive from the Blues Foundation. So with that, let's bring George on and let him tell us a little bit more about how you're seeding greatness with making music and helping people make music. George, tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're ha we're having a rough, a little bit of a different time this year than we normally uh, than we normally you know participate in. In a normal year, we we host at somewhere between twenty and twenty five physical live events that are music oriented. And obviously, with COVID nineteen, uh, we've had to pretty much back burner all of that for the entire year. And we've uh, but what we have done is we've We've gone out since a lot of the artists that we normally support, you know, by attending their live concerts and things, we've gone out and uh, in our weekly calendar, we list as many of the virtual shows that these blues artists are doing so that we can help them, you know, pay their bills and stay alive while we're going through this process of uh, getting our country well and getting everybody else well so that we can get back to what was we will classify as the new normal when that happens. So that's, uh, that, that's one of the things. And like I said, you know, the, the events that we, that we normally do that we miss, uh, you know, we do a blues, we do blues in the schools to educate younger people, mostly middle school kids on the history of everything they listen to. Because a lot of folks don't realize that, that all the music that we ever hear came from the blues. And once you once you start figuring that out and, and looking into it and I'll just I'll just name you one quick one that we're all familiar with. The Rolling Stones took their name from a Muddy Waters blues song, Rolling Stone. And that is that's as good as that gets. And, uh, you know, because the blues, you know, and, 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 and listening to, you know, to the different uh, the different guests that you've had today, the, the blues is a stress reliever. I firmly believe that because the blues, if you think about it and listen to the words, the blues is a rhythm of life. Life goes on, things happen and they aren't always good. But if we talk about them or sing about them and then share them with other people, it makes us feel like, well, I guess my day wasn't as bad. And now I've relieved myself somewhat with that. So, you know, we, we, uh, we get on and blues is my therapy. And uh, I miss that because the last live music that I saw with my wife was on our, on our 52nd wedding anniversary. We drove to Montgomery, Alabama to see a band that we really like out of, uh, well, they're, 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 they're two bands that have put themselves back together uh, on, a, on occasions called Tennessee Redemption. And we drove down to see, uh, you know, Jeff and, uh, and Brandon and cause you know, we, we, we miss them a lot. And uh, when they're in town, they normally stay at our house. And we do that with several other blues artists that, uh, that we can help out. But uh, that's a little bit about a little bit about that. And one other thing real quick, Mike, you'll appreciate this. In a normal world, one of our biggest events is in August every year on the third Sunday. And it's this year would have been at Mad Life Studios. <laughs> and uh <laughs> We're, we we it will be there again next year hopefully you know once once we get this uh, you know this down but it's a, it's an all day musical event mm -hmm. and it's where we pick the band and the solo or duo act that are going to represent us in Memphis in January normally which isn't happening this January because of mm -hmm. of the same COVID nineteen so you know it's uh, it's been a rough year you know in in, in some senses and we've uh, We've got to do everything we can do to get over it. 
you know, I, I can so relate uh, to what you're saying. I have found that music is such an integral part of the human experience, particularly live music and particularly the blues. Just as you said, it talks about life, everyday life. And uh, unfortunately, what we're experiencing is life. Nobody really knows what's going to happen the next day. I so look forward to getting back to a a normal. I, it, it seems to me like I've heard the term the new normal for maybe 10, 12 years. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm really curious. First of all, before I go too far, I want to thank you for your service to our country. That means a lot to me and a lot of our uh, viewers and listeners. I'm curious about blues in the school. I want to learn more about that because that's new to me. I, I wasn't aware that you guys were involved with middle schoolers. Can you tell us a little bit more? Well, uh, yeah, I can. Uh, what we and we've we've done we've done middle schools. The the last one we did, you know, last year was actually a library in uh, in Lilburn. They called us up uh, during Black History. Well, it was about oh, I guess several months before Black History uh, Month, and wanted to do a blues in the schools program in uh, you know in the library. And what we what we what we do is we have four or five of our tried and true artists that uh, have done this for years for us. And that we put together a program and it's a combination of music and history and just, you know, all, you know, all sorts of, uh, you know, of those, those inputs of, as to why, you know, a certain person started playing the blues or started singing the blues or, you know, or whatever. And uh, so we, and the last the last one we did in in a in a middle school, uh, and I can't remember the name of the school in Atlanta, but uh, it was uh, WSB actually filmed it and showed it on their on their Sunday program. So uh, we were kind of tickled about that, uh, and hopefully we can get back to that uh, the next year. Well, I hope so because so many of us so miss live music, live venues. And I got to say a plug for Mad Life. It's a fabulous venue in Woodstock. We are beyond lucky and, and privileged to have the facility that uh, Mike Levy and his wife have put together. His whole family is involved in it. It's state of the art, uh, recording, production, and uh, music venue. And they also, they got great food as well. Um uh, Tell me about the organization itself. Do you guys um, involved in fundraising and other activities, or how does uh, how do you really get your message out to keep the blues alive? What we what we do? Okay, uh, the Atlanta Blues Society was formed in 1995, mm -hmm. and uh, as a matter of fact, the gentleman that uh, that had the idea to, to put it together uh, was transferred here with. Uh, with his company and uh, from St. Louis, Missouri, and okay. uh, or Kansas City, I forget which one of those two, and uh, he is he is the current president of the Atlanta Blues Society, Carlin mm -hmm. Smith, Sino mm -hmm. is his uh, is his nickname, and uh, you know we our, our primary focus is to support well to educate people about the music, which is our Blues in the Schools program, mm -hmm. to support you know, the, the musicians and the venues and, and everybody. Uh, and 10 of the events we do every year are in mm -hmm. one of our, you know, one of our venues, you know, Mad mm -hmm. Life, Blind Willies, uh, uh, Moon Shadow, you know, in, okay. in Tucker, uh, mm -hmm. Magnolia Lounge down, you know, just on the South side mm -hmm. and uh, North side Tavern, you know, which is, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. right down, right there in the, in the heart of the city. And those are free events. We do one on Sundays. Okay. Uh, the only two the only two months we don't do one is August because we're doing our challenge. And in mm -hmm. December we have a holiday party normally, and it's a free event where we we basically you know cater everything, and it's it's a way for our membership us to give something back to them. Yeah. Uh, what supports the Blue Society is our memberships. Okay. Uh, yeah, you know, it, we're yeah you know, we're not an expensive outfit, but a, okay. an individual membership is like thirty dollars a year. A family is forty. Mm -hmm. uh, lifetime is a lifetime. You know, you just you know, mm -hmm. don't want to be bothered with the monthly business. And uh, 
during that time frame, we have sponsors that, you know, that, that donate things to us. Sometimes they're festival tickets. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're other physical things. We raffle those all off because one of the major programs we have in addition is our Blue Flame Fund. And what it does is it, it lets us financially support artists in our area when bad stuff happens you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, health issues or, or something of, you know, of that nature. So it lets us, you know, uh, g you know, give something back to those folks. And, uh, and unfortunately it happens more often than what we'd like to hear. Yeah. And, uh, and a lot of our older artists, you know, never had life in, or excuse me, health insurance. And mm -hmm. consequently, you know, when stuff happens, it's, it's pretty much out of pocket. So th those are the things that we do on a, on a pretty much a daily basis. Um, uh, one of the programs that we did, uh, we did our first one last June, and uh, it was such a success that we're going to we were going to do it again this June. It's called Women in Blues, and uh, we're fortunate enough to have a tremendous number of ladies in the Metro Atlanta area that play and sing our music. And so we uh, we had uh, one of our artists, Diane Durrett, put a show on, and we funded it and. Through everyone's you know participation, we were able to at least break even, which is what we always like to do. We're nonprofit, so when breaking even is a good thing, and uh, it let us put about a, a three-hour show on the stage at Blind Willie's that was all women, and it was like I said, such a success. the The music started at three ten, at three thirty, we had to lock the door. There was no place to get you. We couldn't get anybody else in, so that's a good thing. Always a good thing when you have to lock the door to get, because it's so full. That's that's fantastic. Of course, it's a safety issue, and and it just says that your marketing and uh, what you were offering was fantastic. How how great is that? It is. It's it's, it's good. And one of the other things we did last year, and I was, uh, for you know obvious reasons, I was able to participate. I'm retired, so you know I I, I got more time than uh, than anything else. And and a lot of our other uh, a lot of our other folks aren't retired, so. Uh, one of our sponsors is the uh, the folks that you know help make Atlanta smoke free, and the Atlanta Blue Society has been a member of that organization and a participant. And we, I actually made two trips to City Hall with you know with them to uh, to convince the folks that. Uh, and, and my my mission was to speak for the artists that couldn't speak for themselves, because when you when you have to play to make a living. And you're playing in a place that allows smoking yeah. and you can't say, oh, well, let's put the smoking lamp out because they say, well, no, I'll get a band that doesn't care. So, you know, you guys get on down the road. And, uh, you know, so we we use that approach and uh, we, it thankfully was successful and uh, it was so successful that they had their thank you party at Blind Willie's and uh we we filled that place up again that night and uh once again you know had to uh had to pretty much turn people away because once it once the once the venue's full it's full so uh mm -hmm. best thing i can tell you is you know do whatever you can do to support support the blues support music and uh you know it, it always keeps you in tune as to what's going on we publish a calendar every tuesday and it comes out by email and uh Right now, we're, I don't know our membership, we're in the four to 500 range on a, on, a, on a normal basis, but we have got a tremendous number of people all over the world who look at our blues, look at our blues calendar whenever they're going to be coming through the Atlanta area to see where good live music is. And we're the key. We're the key. <laughs> George, speaking of live music, I'm curious if there is, if you found a secret to getting, to doing a live Zoom event type event um, with music, with people playing different instruments and different people singing, because I, I've heard pe people, just a few people trying to sing and coordinate it, and it's been a disaster. <laughs> um, so is there a key to that, or do you generally show recorded music and then you guys talk about it in your live events? How do you do that? Well, one of the, you know, when, when we do our, when we do our 10 Sunday gatherings, okay, to give you an example, what we do is we hire a band to play for an hour. And then we have an open mic for the next two hours where you sign up 
and we have a uh, matter of fact, uh, Wes Gifford, and you may you may know Wes. I don't know. He's I think he's a member of the Lions. But uh, when I, when you said that earlier, Mike. Anyway, mm-hmm. he's our he's our jam master. So what he's a bass player and a singer. Mm-hmm. But so what he does is he takes all the names and he puts a band together. And oh, the band is you know and and you got your fifteen minutes of fame or three songs, and it's a very good way for folks to 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 learn you know, how to participate in, you know, that kind of a, that kind of a situation. And uh, it, it's always kind of cool when we're doing those. And sometimes you have a perfect world and sometimes you don't, but uh, <laughs> I've had, uh, I've had people ask me before, we'd, 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 we'd have a really great group of, you know, four or five folks on stage and someone would say, my gosh, they're good. How long they've been together. And I'd look at them and say, <laughs> oh, about 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> But if if you're a good musician, okay, and, and the key to that, and I'm not, okay, I, I like I said, I can't carry a tune in a bucket, and uh, and I understand that, so I don't try. But there are a lot of folks who've got a lot of talent, and sometimes it's good to take the talent that you have and then learn how to adapt it, you know, in a in a group environment, and uh, it's fun, you know. Well, as, as we wrap up today, George, I'd love to know, I, I know that Randy Stukes, who is our behind the scenes person who's coordinating all of these shows and, and reserving our guests and communicating with our guests, uh, that he's part of your organization. So how did you meet Randy and, and what's he been, how's he been involved with your organization? Well, I met, I met Randy and I don't remember exactly what the venue was, but I met Randy at one of our Sunday gatherings. And uh, that's, I mean, you know, we, we met, we talked and, you know, obviously had a whole lot of things in common and uh, we've just, we've just become good friends, you know, over the years. And he called me up, uh, I don't know when it was and said, uh, Hey, he said, how do you, how do you feel about, you know, doing this? And I said, well, I said, I'm not bashful. And I said, <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, I said, uh, sure. And I said, well, so here we go. It's uh it's, it's been fun. I enjoyed it. I'd do it anytime. And uh, so, you know, the main thing is just because you know, an awful lot of folks, when they meet me and I give them a, a you know business card and say, OK, here's, you know, this is the Atlanta Blue Society. They say, I didn't know there was such a thing, you know, and, and that's that 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 that's the unfortunate you know situation. But, you know, the more we get the word out, then, you know, the more, you know, and uh, and, you know, we did we did we we we. A lot of folks found out who we were in, in January of 2019 when uh, the Blues Foundation, you know, gave us a Lifetime Achievement Award, basically, and that's what it is that for the lifetime of, of what we've done, and uh, and we do a lot for music. Uh, when we uh, you talk about recordings and things, when we do our challenge, we film that entire challenge, and we record off the soundboard the entire challenge, and then we have one of our board members has a studio up on Lake Lanier. And he puts the video together with the audio and we give every participant their 25 minute set in high definition video and fully mixed down multi-track audio. And that's done through making, you know, making a scene magazine and uh, Midnight Circus is the, uh, you know, is the recording studio. Rich Lahamadou does that for us. And those are things that are, you know, our board membership allows us to be able to do. And it, it, helps us stand out a little bit from everybody else. And then the winners, we give them, he gives them all the studio time they need to cut a master disc, oh, which wow. you know is, is a pretty, pretty good chunk of change if you had to go pay for it. So, you know, those are, those are some of the things that we do for, you know, for the music and our members and, and, uh, you know, and everything else. So, uh, well, I love that. And so just to let people know how to get in touch with you, Atlanta blues society.org. That's dot O R G. Yep, yeah, and uh, yeah, you everything on there. We've got a great website. Uh, we've got a great webmaster, and uh, it's uh, you know a lot of other blue societies have always said when they grow up they want to be like us, <laughs> and uh, that's that's a good feeling, you know, when uh, when, yeah. when you're looked at is probably the, one of the top five blue societies in the world. Well, and, that's uh, quite with, a compliment. With, with everything well, George, we do, so we, we, we really are. We we've got a great bunch of people, great board, great members, great musicians. And uh, great fans. 
Well, you are a great part of our community now that you have been a guest on our TEDx Dupree Park TV, and we so appreciate you so, so much. Thank you so much, George, and we will see you around. I'll tell you, uh, it's just great visiting with him, and I agree with you, Mike. I miss the live music, and, uh, you know, Randy is quite a musician, quite a talented musician, and he put together some tunes for us, uh, some mm -hmm. things that he put together specifically for us, as well as just for sharing with the world. And one that I was particularly excited about is called Soap and Water, which is particularly effective right now. And mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it a try, see if I can play it as our takeout okay. song here. But before I go to that, uh, just tell me, Mike, any closing thoughts on today's Stress for success, get unstressed for success. That's probably what our theme today has been, right? Each and every week is a little different and each and every week is better and more fun. I love these TV episodes and I look forward to them. Uh, my parting thoughts is go to TEDxDupreePark.com, get your tickets. If you're liking what you're seeing now, I promise we will blow you out of the water on December 5th and 6th four hours each day. We're going to have not only incredibly compelling speakers, we're going to have top flight entertainment. We're going to have the breakout sessions. We're going to wow you. We're going to wow you. I think you'll walk away thinking this has been a good use of my time. I've learned a lot and I appreciate TEDx Dupree Park. Okay. Well, with that, I think I do need a couple more seconds here just to see if I can get the music going right because I want to make sure that I do. Mm -hmm. I, I find StreamYard. I'm I'm really a super. You know, I'm pretty. I'm pretty strong in Zoom. Yeah. I, I I must say. But when it comes to StreamYard, sometimes I get a little bit tripped up with the technology, and some people will say, "Oh, it's just so easy," and that's like most parts of technology, right? It's easy when you use it a lot and you really yeah. know how. So let's see if I can go to the right spot, share audio and share our website as you and I tune out and wish our viewers well. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. If you like Thank the show, you. please subscribe, get alerts for when we go live again, which will be again next Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. And uh, go on over to TEDxDupreePark.com and get those tickets so that you can join us on December 5th and 6th. So thank you so much. Here we go with a share. And I'm going to turn on the music. Let's see. I got a soul. And water. I'm going to wash them up good. Inside my palms. Between my fingers starting to feel mighty warm. I got the soul. And water on the back of my hands, all up around my wrist. I got soap and water on my fingertips. I got soap. Oh my goodness, I love that! Isn't that cool? <laughs> Randy's Randy's an amazing guy. We've been so lucky and fortunate to have him part of our team managing our speakers and uh, gathering terrific guests, corralling them for this um, very fun TV show that we do each and every week. So thanks. Thanks, Randy, for all you do. Thanks, Randy, for all you do. Thank you, Marcy, our producer, Marcy Walsh, who is our producer. And she's having a lot of fun these days and learning a lot of systems as she's out there helping people produce their events. So mm -hmm. if you want a producer for your virtual event, you want to help to make sure things don't go wrong uh, and you have you have well it's just not too pleasant when things go wrong that's for sure so Marcy Walsh is out there and she's our producer every week and she's helping us so much with that and certainly John Clunan is doing a yeoman's job of getting the word out about our shows and about our TEDx Dupree Park event so we yeah. appreciate that so much so with that let's say goodbye to everybody and take care <laughs>